We've got ourselves an outlier slate in the terms of how many strikeouts we can find for tonight in MLB DFS because there aren't a lot of guys going tonight who have strikeout upside. Two of the guys who typically do in um, Lucas Giolito and Kevin Gosman aren't at their best right now. Sonny Gray Gray's not fully stretched out. We don't have a lot of guys on this slate who can get you six, seven, eight strikeouts dependably. And it does lead to a bit of a different dynamic than what we typically have. So we're going to have to find a way to navigate around that, uh, account for the lack of strikeouts, try to find guys who maybe do have upside, or maybe find guys who are not typically in play, but are for tonight because of the composition of the slates. Let's dive on in and get you set for this Monday slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com here to break down a nine-game main slate for Monday night with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern today. And there isn't a lot of weather to note because... Only rain spot is in New York for uh, that Yankees game as they're facing off with the A's. It looks like the rain will be gone before first pitch. So they should be good there. Other note I would mention is that it's a lot warmer on the West Coast than it typically is. In Los Angeles for the Angels and the White Sox, uh, first pitch temperature 82 degrees there. And it's 84 degrees in Seattle, which is actually tied with Coors for the warmest park of the night, which never happens in Seattle. So bump up bats in. LA and Seattle to account for the increased temperatures from where things are typically at there. We'll dive on in to get you set for the pitching preview in just one second. But first, a sports fan, there is no better time than today to sign up for FanDuel Fantasy. For users who have yet to make a deposit on FanDuel Fantasy, you can deposit now to receive two free entries. All you have to do is deposit a minimum of $10 into your FanDuel DFS account, and you will be instantly rewarded with two free vouchers. This is a limited time offer, so be sure to deposit now and play for free. Head to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate. Pablo Lopez is the highest salary pitcher checking in at $10,000 on FanDuel. Martin Perez is 97. Kevin Gosman 95. Jordan Montgomery is 92. We got George Kirby at 9,000. Tristan McKenzie, Tyler Anderson, Tyler Wells, Adam Wainwright, and Sonny Gray, uh, and Lucas Giolito as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, as I mentioned, Giolito, Velo really bad last time out. Gosman in a weird kind of funk. And Perez, Lopez, not the biggest strikeout guys, not the biggest strikeout matchups. It's hard to find strikeouts. The one guy I feel really good about for tonight is George Kirby. I'm going to lock Kirby in for cash games and make him my top guy for tournaments as well. I just think he's that good. Now, this is despite the fact that it is very warm in Seattle, so take this with a grain of salt. Don't take it as view it as a as good of a park as usual for pitching, but still do like Kirby a lot. He's facing the Orioles, and it's a pretty decent matchup. They have a 97 WRC plus against righties in their current active roster with a 23% strikeout rate and a 7% walk rate. It's an above average matchup just by a smidge in each department. And Kirby is in a really good zone right now. He's been leaning more on his curveball across his past six starts. And it's a really good pitch for him. Gets a lot of wits. It's helping him get a healthy number of strikeouts. He has a 25% strikeout rate in this time. He's gotten six plus strikeouts. In four of those six games, he had eight plus twice, and his big spike came at home against the A's. Now, the A's at home is a better match than what he gets for tonight against the the Orioles, but there are some similarities. I do think Kirby has really good upside for tonight. I'm not sure if he'll get us, you know, double digits or anything, but I'm not sure anyone on this slate really can. I've got Kirby projected for 6.3 strikeouts for tonight, so... Wouldn't be shocked if we get a six inning, six strikeout, seven strikeout somewhere in their performance. Nobody else is projected for more than 5.6 strikeouts. So I think it makes sense to make Kirby the unquestioned top guy for today. So George Kirby, to me, belongs to the top of our list, regardless of format. I think he's the one guy you can feel really good about, and he's the one guy I feel good about for tonight. The second slot is between three guys. I think they are Kevin Gosman, Lucas Giolito, and Pablo Lopez. I think those are guys you consider in terms of guys who have a path to a ceiling. They're probably the considerations that you would have there. 
I'm pretty worried about Giolito, so I'm probably going to cross him off. Gosman just hasn't been on, and he's facing a low strikeout Boston team. Lopez is pitching well, but he's on the road against a very good low strikeout Cardinals offense. I'm going to go Gosman, but my conviction level here is admittedly pretty low. If you love Lopez, no pushback. I think that's totally fine. The reason I'm skeptical of Gosman is that he slipped. Uh, he hasn't had more than eight strikeouts since May 1st. He's had five or fewer in six of those nine starts. He is trying to get back to it because early in the year, Gosman is throwing sliders. It was helping him get strikeouts. And then he scaled back on that. It's so right around the time where he started to cool off. He was throwing fewer sliders. But he's gone back to it, and it hasn't helped him regain his form yet. In the five starts with the slider usage being back up, his strikeout rate is 20%. He has faced some low strikeout teams, but he also faced Detroit in there. In Detroit, he had just four strikeouts there. So that's why I lack conviction in being high on Gosman here. So the question then would be why use him at all if I don't really feel that good about him. He does still have upside. He faced the White Sox last week. He went six innings. He had seven strikeouts. They're a pretty low strikeout team. He was on the road. So if I tell you Gosman winds up as the highest scoring pitcher on the slate, would that surprise you? It wouldn't really surprise me, but I'm also not surprised if he fails. But that's why Kirby is higher for me, and that's why he's the cash game guy. For tournaments, we can get we can take on more risk. So I'm okay with Gosman here. On a better slate, I'd definitely avoid him. He'd be an easy avoid there, but this is not that. So I'll ask some shares. Don't feel great about it, but I think that of the guys available, if you tell me eight strikeouts, he's probably number two on that list behind Kirby for me in terms of most likely to get there. For the third slot, I could go Pablo Lopez because Kirby is at 9,000, could count as a value play. But as mentioned, it's a tough spot for him, a tough situation, and I really do want to stack Coors Field. So instead, I'm going to take a discount here and use the guy actually facing Lopez in that same game, which is Adam Wainwright, $8,500. Wainwright is a guy you can use only in specific situations. You need a low strikeout slate, but that's that's exactly what we have here. Wainwright is a good real-world pitcher. He's held opponents to a 34% hard hit rate this year. His fly ball rate is 32%, and that's why his ERA is 3.32. He's just not a big strikeout guy, and but he can flash that at times because he had 10 strikeouts against the Padres on May 31st. He had seven twice since then, and he goes deep in games, gives himself chances to rack up those strikeouts. So Wainwright is not a bad pitcher. He's just not typically a guy we tend to use in DFS because he's not a big strikeout guy. There aren't many people on this slate who can really light it up, which means our opportunity cost for using a lower strikeout pitcher is lower than it typically would be. So I'm actually okay with it. Considering the bats that I want to use, considering how heavy I want to be at cores, I'm okay putting Wainwright third on my list after accounting for salary. So pitching for tonight, I will go Kirby one for sure, Gosman two, and then I will go with Wainwright three. If you want to put Lopez second, cool. I don't blame you there. Going from third, fine. I put him fourth, but I think that he's good enough to be in that discussion despite a very difficult situation. So I spoiled the top stack earlier on. That is the Dodgers. I want to stack Coors Field for today. They're the clear-cut stop, top stack of the night. So the Dodgers, to me, the no-brainer option, a pitcher or hitter of the night, for sure. They're facing Chad Cool. Cool has had some good results this year with a 3.95 ERA, which is pretty impressive. But the peripherals are still not ideal. He has a 4.83 skill interactive ERA overall. More recently, he's been throwing more curveballs. And it hasn't helped a whole lot. His Sierra is 5.39 in that time with a 16% strikeout rate and really rough bat at ball numbers. The results still have not been bad, but he's facing the Dodgers here at Coors Field. They're not fully healthy. The Dodgers aren't, uh, but they still got enough guys to do some damage here. The active roster has a 117 WRC plus against righties. So I kind of think the Dodgers are just a no brainer. I think that to me, the two biggest, you know, not, not sure things, the two, certainties as far as places I want to go for today are Kirby and the Dodgers. I think else a little bit more amorphic for sure, but um, Kirby and the Dodgers, the two things I feel best about for tonight. One thing to keep in mind with Coors Field is stolen bases. The atmosphere at Coors helps home runs, but it also means they have a massive, massive outfit, a lot of green for hits to fall into, which leads to 
more base hits, more times on base, and it gives you more chances to swipe bags. And I think that kind of goes a bit overlooked when it comes to stacking course field. The Rockies have let up the third most steals in baseball in part because of this. So bump up Trey Turner due to stolen base upside, bump up Cody Bellinger, Gavin Lux, Chris Taylor as well. And Freddie Freeman, not afraid to dabble in a stolen base. So I would say account for that. You know, I'm not saying only use guys who get stolen bases. because I love Will Smith, but maybe give them a slight bump up if they are guys who can run because the increased number of times on base does benefit them quite a bit. So just in general, I think we should account more for stolen base upside when we're deciding which batters to use at Coors Field. Last week, we were on the Twins against Tristan McKenzie, and it was a pretty risky move because he's a good pitcher, but it worked out there, and I think we should do it again as they face for the second consecutive start for McKenzie. And the thought process behind stacking the Twins there was pretty simple. McKenzie is a good pitcher, but he lets up too much hard contact, lets up too many fly balls, and it leads to a pretty significant dinger problem. And we saw that play out because McKenzie let up three home runs in four and one-third innings. He let up six total earned runs. That was while getting five strikeouts, which is not that bad. McKenzie's been using his slider more across his past nine starts, which gets him strikeouts, but it also leads to dingers. And the Twins have faced him twice in this time. They've hit five home runs off him in those two games, multiple home runs in both. This one is in Cleveland, and McKenzie has pitched a bit better at home, albeit in a very small sample. But progressive field, not a bad spot to hit home runs. So I'll be heavy on the Twins in this rematch for tonight because of the dinger problems McKenzie has had, because they just saw him, because they just did well against him. I think it lines up really well to make the Twins a quality stack. As we discussed on the stack last week, McKenzie does struggle more with righties than lefties. So Byron Buxton, if his knee is good to go, uh, gets bumped up. Same for Carlos Correa. Actually had a couple home runs in that game against McKenzie last week. I'd also give a boost to Gary Sanchez. He has a 236 ISO against righties so far this year. Lower strikeout rate too, about 27%. So I think Sanchez is pretty fun if he plays, uh, if he starts a pitcher for, or catcher for tonight as a guy who could have some... Nice dinger upside. So Correa, Buxton, Sanchez all get bumped up due to McKenzie's reverse platoon splits. For the third stack, I'm going to go check out the Jays. They're facing Connor Seabald, who is making his 2022 debut. I don't think he's bad. He's been really good, actually, in AAA. But there is some upside here that we don't find in many other spots on tonight's slate. Most of that is due to the Jays themselves. They have a 108 WRC plus against righties. And they're hitting the ball really well right now. So it's a tough ask for Seaball to come up and face them. Like I said, he was pitching well in AAA. He had a 2.09 ERA. Couple issues with his underlying numbers, though. The first one is that he's probably not going to strike a ton of guys out. He has a 25% strikeout rate in AAA with an 11.9% swinging strike rate. So that's one issue. Second issue is that he's going to let up a lot of fly balls. He has let up a 45% fly ball rate this year. It was 48% last year at AAA. So we're going to get a lot of balls in play. And a lot of those will probably be in the air. We've seen Seabold, I assume, get by by suppressing hard contact. But it's at least going to give us swipes at long balls here. And I'll take that on a slate where there aren't a ton of high upside stacks for tonight. It might not work out. That's definitely very possible. But... I think it's worth the risk for me. So I think that the Jays, not a surefire stack, but a good one and one that I feel solid about for tonight. Within those J stacks, I think this could be just a me thing, but I need to bump up my view of Alejandro Kirk. I've always been okay with him. Like I was okay with Kirk always, especially when he's a value play, getting to him and including him in stacks, but he's never been a priority part of my J stacks. But He's up to a 203 ISO against righties so far this year across 182 plate appearances, which is actually a pretty big sample. He has a 9% strikeout rate. So sure, the salary is 35, which is between George Springer and Bo Bichette and above Teoscar Hernandez, but it's pretty legit. So I'm still going to prefer, prefer Vlad. I'll prefer Springer and Hernandez, but I might put Kirk above Bichette regarding position on eligibility, like if we need a shortstop, fine. Uh, but I'm bumping Kirk up and I feel like I might've been too low on him before, but we can make amends now and uh, load up on him. So Alejandro Kirk, despite the increased salary, a guy I am willing to include as a key part of my J stacks for tonight. 
Let's go to things to watch and touch more on Lucas Giolito. His salary is low at $8,000, but, and you could use him and stack cores with that salary. I'm just not sure what to think about him because he averaged just 92 miles per hour on his four-seam fastball his last time out, which was low. Um, it was the highest it's been all year at the start before that. So it was low. It was high before that, but it was also low the start before that one. It was 92.2 miles per hour. So two very low velocity starts in his past three outings. It's a pretty big red flag for me. There is upside on taking a chance on him, but I'm probably not going to do it personally for tonight. Facing the Angels, they do strike out, but they're a really good offense. So I'll keep an eye on him, see what he does. Maybe I'll have some stacks against him just to see if um, see how things go. But I just don't see enough to really incentivize me to take a swipe at Giolito for tonight. I'm not sure what the Pirates are doing for their starter today. It sounds like the options are a bullpen game or Osvaldo Bido to start. Their bullpen, not one we need to avoid, but also it's the Nats. So I'm not like super, super jumpy to get there. I would be okay stacking against uh, Obido though. So, or uh, against Bido. So might be able to squeeze out some Nats bats in there. If you want to go uh, with some one-offs, tougher to go with a full stack on that offense. But if you want to get some one-offs there, Juan Soto is uh, 42. Josh Bell, 34. Salary is pretty reasonable on that team as a whole. So I would be okay with the Nationals, uh, depending on what the Pirates wind up doing. If you want a contrarian stack and to take advantage of that weather in Seattle, I check out the Mariners for stacking. They're facing Tyler Wells, who has a 3.34 ERA this year, which is... Pretty good, uh, but his peripherals, not as bright. It's also warmer in Seattle today than usual at 84 degrees. So I'll be in on them. I assume others will not, and that's okay. Uh, and I think that's a good uh, tournament stack. So if you want to go single entry and go Kirby Dodgers, maybe you toss in the Mariners as a second stack to make it a bit different because the Mariners will be very, 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 very popular for tonight. So the Mariners could be a route to swallowing the chalk without duping everyone else's lineup. Let's finish up with some dinger calls for today. The boring one is Freddie Freeman. It's Coors Field. It's Freddie Freeman facing Chad. Cool. Let's a lot of fly balls to lefties. What else you got to say there? The fun one, I will go Gary Sanchez. I mentioned that again, McKenzie has reverse platoon splits, really does struggle with righties. Sanchez is a righty and progressive field. He's hitting the ball really hard this year. A, a good ISO. Decently low strikeout rate. So I'll go with Freddie Freeman and Gary Sanchez as the home run calls for today. That is all we have here for today on the Solo Shot full week of MLB DFS podcast coming up. We also have our PGA DFS podcast every Tuesday with myself and Brandon Gadula. We have USC and NASCAR covered as well with NFL just around the corner. So hit subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for Tuesday's Slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.